there's so many people um, when you, you think back, you know, and you saw, and you went were in plays with them where you did work backstage and you got, you know, and you talked to them. And it was a, it was a family. The theater was a family. And that's what's so important. It's, it's grown into me and through me and will always be with me in one way or another. So what I would say, first and foremost, it's different than any other facility you've ever worked in unless you've worked in an actual barn. Uh, while we are small, it is an excellent way to gain experience, to both learn things and develop a hobby. None of the good things have changed. All the really good things about Iowa City Community Theater are still the same. The, the sense of community, the tradition, the commitment to excellence, those have all really stayed the same. The fact is that ICCT felt immediately to me like a piece of my childhood recreated for adults. So that's what it is. It's like uh, this is the place that you want to go and just say hi to people and just you feel welcome. I'm Roger Heilman, and uh, I've been involved in ICTP productions since uh, 1984, when I was uh, uh, the two delegates from New York combined into one role uh, in a production called 1776. I'm Beverly Mead, and around theater and music venues, I'm more often referred to as Mama Mead, because I adopt people. I like people a lot. Um, and so I just take them on as my family member. Uh, hi, I'm Kathy Maxey, and I've been involved with ICCT since 2002. My name is Rip Russell, and I've been involved in Iowa City Community Theater since 1983, my first play. And uh, my last one was, two, well, my last one so far was 2018. So I guess that makes it about 35 years I've been doing plays at ICCT. I'm Dave Rowe. I have been involved with the theater since the early 90s, uh, and I've been on the board for the last 14 years. My name is Mary Ellen Hudicek. I'm a longtime member of Iowa City Community Theater here in Iowa City. All consecutive years, by the way. Uh, I've been involved with ICCT since uh, fall of 94 with My Fair Lady. Um, since that time, I've completely lost count with how many shows I've been involved with in one capacity or another. I would be willing to bet money that I've been involved in at least one show every year for the last 26 years. And there have been some seasons where I was involved with every show in one way or another. I'm Rachel Lindhardt, and I've been involved with ICCT since 1993, um, yes, 93, when I first uh, assistant directed Jerry Rowe on a production. Then the next year I started directing myself and unless I've forgotten one, I've directed seven plays at ICCT. And I've also done costumes for seven mm -hmm. plays at ICCT. Eleanor Levin. I became involved with ICCT in 2009 or 2010. So about 10 or 11 years I've been around and I've been on the board for, for four years total. <laughs> Hi, I'm Rachel Rhodes. I guess I start that way. Um, so uh, back in 2015, my husband and I moved to Iowa. We didn't have any family here. It was just the two of us. All our family lives four and a half hours away. And I was really scared. Like I had done theater most of my life, but I was really nervous about getting involved in a new theater. And so around 2016, I saw that ICCT was doing You're a Good Man, Charlie Brown. And I kind of thought that 
oh, well, there's only six people in that cast. I probably won't get cast in it. So all the pressure's kind of off. Let's just kind of get my foot in the door, you know, maybe get some people to see me. Maybe they'll recognize me next time. And I, to my humongous surprise, I was, at, I was not only cast in it, but I was cast as Charlie Brown. And that was kind of life-changing for me in the fact that I finally had friends here. My name is Nick Rajansky. I uh, did some theater way back in the day when I was in high school, um, performed in a couple shows, some musicals, uh, kind of helped behind the scenes with some um, plays. And then I took about a roughly 20 year break um, by, before getting back involved with Iowa City Community Theater. Hi, my name is Josh Sazon. Um, I have done theater with ICCT for, uh, since probably about 2001, 2002. Quite frankly, the details escape me. Not that I'd really like to remember that closely. It just makes me feel old. I came into ICCT after not having done theater for about 15 years. So it was interesting getting back to it. I don't know how many shows I've been involved with ICCT. Over 12, probably 15 to 16 shows. My first show was uh, The Man Who Came to Dinner. And Elaine King was directing it. And I don't know when it was. When you, I don't know when it, when that was. And I played the crazy ants. The good, obviously, with the organization is the community and the sense of family that it engenders. Um, Armiston Maupin is famous for having coined the phrase the logical family. Um, you know, you have your biological family, which is the ones you're related to by blood or by law. But your logical family are the ones that you choose to have as part of your life. And ICCT has definitely expanded my logical family. And, you know, it, it's a wacky bunch of people. It's a very incestuous bunch of people, you know. <laughs> but I love them all dearly, and my life would be very, very different without them. One of the things that you should know about my background is that I had never done any community theater in my life until I directed for ICCT. I had done, I acted in high school, I had directed high school people, and I have been in the professional theater, but I never did any community theater. And what first impressed me as being the good thing, particularly about ICT, CC, ICCT, was the audiences. Um, I don't know about other directors, but I, especially when I did Our Town, the first one, and also um, To Kill a Mockingbird, I saw every single performance at the theater of my show. Um, and the audiences were just amazing. It, it um, made me once again sort of touch um, what the power of the theater is. I mean, it was amazing. You know, people were laughing or they were in tears. It, it, was, it was just wonderful. And I think that has been um, one of the best things about ICCT. It has been the response of its audiences which is why I think that after these COVID-19 times are over, the audience will be back. I'm sure of it. The good, uh, which continues to this day, is just giving people in the community a chance to get and practice what they enjoy. They may not be a professional at it. They may not have studied theater or design or, or uh, acting or directing, set design, costuming, whatever. They may not have studied that. They might make it a passion or a hobby. And it's an outlet for them to do it. And to this day, that's what community theater is all about. Uh, so that to me has always been the good about the community theater and specifically Iowa City Community Theater. ICCT is not beholden to anyone who does not love our organization, um, which gives us a flexibility that I don't know of any other 
community theater that has ever had. Um, we are able to take risks and try things and pivot when a show falls through because we can't get a certain pivotal prop when um, there's a pandemic, <laughs> when there are challenges financially or when uh, someone comes in with a really creative but risky idea when other organizations want to collaborate with us. It's always about a group of people who love what ICCT does making decisions on behalf of that group. And I think that is an incredible font of good in our community um, and so meaningful and so potentially groundbreaking and so powerful. The good of ICCT is just the sense of community it instills in everyone. Because it's not just the actors, it's not just the directors. There's so many people who go into making every performance. And yes, even the audience is very important. I have people who have seen me in multiple ICCT shows, but have never been in a show themselves. Like I'm friends with them on Facebook because they recognized me and we've talked after every show. The good, the people. Everybody is volunteering their own time in every aspect of working at ICCT. And that's amazing because that's a lot of personal time that you're giving up to be in a barn. And there's a lot of um, variance in the conditions in the barn over a full year or full season, but people give so much energy and there's so much support. Like I said before, it's really, it's more than a theater. It's, it's a family and maybe we're dysfunctional, but we're fun dysfunctional. Um, there's a lot of opportunity too. however you want to be involved. I've been fortunate enough to be in shows and I was on the play and director selection committee for three years, I think. Um, other ways you can help out, yes, ushering, uh, helping to clean up incidus, exodus, and I was fortunate enough when Krista asked me to help stage manage, I never thought I'd be able to do something like that. And it was an amazing, amazing experience. Thank you, everybody. One thing that strikes out for me, at least with the good, is the opportunity. Um, as I said, I came back to doing theater after not having done it for about 15 years. So it was very nice to have the opportunity to, to be doing it again to have the have had the opportunity to play some wonderful parts over the years and especially given my ethnicity in the middle of Iowa that was something I didn't really expect so I am very grateful for that um, I as a director I got to direct some of the more interesting uh, material with ICCT. I, I managed to do shows that hardly anyone have ever heard of before. I, my first show with ICCT is a musical called She Loves Me, which is a wonderful musical that practically no one's ever heard of. My second show that I did, that I directed, was The Baker's Wife by Stephen Schwartz. Again, wonderful show, and I'm sure some of you would uh, have some good memories of that one. And uh, it was, they, they let me do it. I was amazed, and, and I am thankful. And had this pandemic not happened, that I would have... Um, I would direct in Stephen Sondheim's Follies, another one of my bucket list and something that hardly is ever done. So I'm grateful. So the good of ICCT for me definitely is the people and the uh, friendships that are made uh, both during a show and being on the board for as long as I have been. I've made some really good friends. Um, for me, the bad is how how every every production seems to just never have enough time to get get put on. There's always interruptions and things that have to wait till the very last second. Uh, it just seems like you just never know on opening night if the whole thing is going to stay together or fall apart. 
So I remember something Sandy Irvine and I always said when our eyes met and things seemed like the whole thing was going to fall apart. We just got together and said, it'll gel. Now, the bad, of course, um, is that you're working with people um, sometimes who I, I prefer to think that the problem is um, that they don't have much time to devote to it. They don't have time outside. So sometimes, Josh um, or anybody, they can't they can't learn their lines and that's difficult and it's very hard for a director to work around that i would say it's the one thing that it's hard for a director to work around so um and i don't think i've ever had that problem really um in any of the plays i've directed i've been fortunate but that is something that i've seen undermine theaters um at our at our community theater and indeed at any theater the bad when i think about things that are bad about the theater not really bad but um you know there's been there's a lot of competition in this town and and uh, and in other towns for community theater uh there's there's several other uh production companies in town and so the competition is is quite stiff so if anything could be said about bad when i think about bad uh, it's just that there's a lot of competition, which is, in a way, is overall is kind of a, a nice, good thing for the community to have so many different outlets. But it does uh, it does uh, stretch the resources and uh, the economic uh, prowess of the Iowa City Community Theater when they have to fight for those do dollars even harder. Uh, so, you know, if there was something bad about it, I guess that would be kind of a bad thing. The bad at ICCT, uh, for me, the bad at ICCT is that we aren't great at creating a communal feeling between shows. Um, it's something that I personally work on and will continue to work on, but I do feel like we have these incredible experiences that are contained to each show, but we're not the best at drawing the line between those shows and having the groups that make the production teams and the casts and the orchestras and the designers and everyone involved feel like they were part of a larger season. Um, that's the thing that I feel like we struggled with and could still grow in. The bad. Every now and again, we would get somebody who was wonderful at auditions. And by the time they got to rehearsals, they were god awful. And those kind of people never did leave a show. And you couldn't fire them because we were all working for free. That was hard because a lot of times it was the, some of the people you were most intent on having because they look good, they had nice voices, because you do kind of try to match their voice and, and what you or them or other people think the voice should be like. And a lot of times we make mistakes. So that was probably the hardest part is that you didn't know till it was too late. The politics, I guess, sometimes both within the show itself and outside um, and, and uh, within the management of ICCT. I have, to, I have to preface that by saying that the last couple of years, I thought that ICCT has pretty much gotten its act together as far as that's concerned, but that is, and I suppose that that is something that can always be found in most other the community theaters. Um, it's, ICCT does not have paid staff, so sometimes uh, communication can get a little bit flummoxed. And also in uh, within shows themselves, sometimes you have um, uh, cliques or cadres. My God, it's almost like being back in high school. Um, and that can also be nasty, but uh, 
again, it's not necessarily something that's happened as often as it used to. So I'm grateful for that. But that is one of the not so nice things about community theater. And as I said, it may not necessarily just be pertinent to ICCT, but most community theaters as well. The bad of ICCT, definitely some of the facility thing, issues, like freezing to death during uh, oh, life after high school. That was probably the coldest experience when we had no heat. And it was terribly cold in the theater. Um, the dressing rooms could, you know, those are pretty bad. Ugly for me is incidus and exodus. Oh man, getting everything in that place and getting everything out of that place is just such a struggle. But uh, it's it's all worth it because we can create some magic within those four walls. Ugly is what it takes to do exodus and incidus. My first impression of Iowa City Community Theater, the building, um would fall under the ugly category <laughs> the ugly for me is another easy choice and that would be the barn um it's a just not very attractive to look at the inside is not very attractive to look at um it's old it's worn down it's beaten up um it's kind of the least attractive part about coming to an ICCT show is or even performing in it because it can get really cold at times um as far as ugly goes uh, I was at the theater uh, in the early 80s when ICCT had a paid uh, staff, an artistic director, a technical director, and I saw some, um, and whenever you have that, whenever you have people in a position that that uh, maybe uh, they take it a little bit more seriously than maybe they should or could, that you get a lot of hurt feelings. And there were some people that left the theater back in the early 80s, um, and uh, feelings were hurt, and um that would be, in my term, I guess, the ugly aspect of Iowa City Community Theater or any community theater is that you're going to have those types of, of things happen, uh, sadly. Um, so that would be the ugly. But overall, I think the good outweighs uh, the bad or the ugly at ICCT. And, and once again, it just it's an outlet for people to practice, you know, what they like to do, whether they've studied it or whether there's just like I want to be in one play in my lifetime. Um, and I think that's just a, a great benefit for any community, uh, including ours. In my opinion, the, the thing that comes to mind when I consider the ugly of ICCT is January of, I believe, 2012 in a leotard with a bell tied around my waist when it was, I want to say, between negative 10 and two degrees outside and therefore it was frigid in the barn for White Christmas. It was my favorite show I've done with ICCT. The dancing was just a delight and I got to have so much fun in that show, but I was frozen through. And that, that to me is what comes to mind when I think about the ugly for ICCT. The ugly, the smell of the bathrooms before they were remodeled. The ugly huddled around um, around the space heater uh, in the middle of February backstage. Uh, yeah, for me, that's probably about as ugly as it gets. For the ugly, again, having been on the board, some of those board meetings were got to be pretty ugly. Uh, but in the end, everything manages to come together, just like when you're two days away from opening night and it looks like this is never gonna happen. It was an old barn and it was cold and the roof leaked and all that, but that was all part of the, and when it rained, you heard the rain, you had to stop performance for a while until it let up, but that was all part of the charm. I see it as part of the charm. I don't think it was ugly. It was just one of those things you cope with. And just like everything, you know, nothing's perfect. So you just got to keep on trucking, I guess. Um, there have been a lot of productions that I've been involved with that have meant different things to me, very, you know, of various uh, levels of importance. 
I guess, obviously, the man of no importance would probably be the top of that peak. It was a very personal performance for me um, for a number of reasons. You know, I, I felt that I, I really identified with the character and with the, the, the situation. You know, having grown up in small towns where being a gay person was not something that you talked about or even acknowledged in any way. I, you know, so I was able to draw on that to help me create Alfie and obviously being able to play an Irishman, I'm Irish myself in, you know, at least partly. And so that was, that was fun. And the score is just gorgeous. Uh, an experience I'll never forget. And here we are going back to Fiddler on the Roof, but uh, the 93 production, we hadn't gotten too far into the play, and this was another arena style uh, setting. Uh, an audience member had a heart attack, uh, one of our dear patrons, and the only place they could set her to, until the ambulance came was right on the stage, right on the floor. And uh, we basically, we all exited, we stopped the scene, um, got her, got her to the hospital and uh, she recovered, she was okay. But we didn't know that. We didn't know uh, what her condition was. So we started the next scene. And the next scene, of course, was Sabbath prayer. And so many people were close to losing it. It was pretty scary, but uh, uh, the show went on. And later on, I, I started getting interested in sets. My first set was Mice and Men. I remember that. I was working at ACT and I had all this wonderful lumber you know, skids and stuff. And I thought, oh my God, we got to do something with this. Elaine King was directing the play. And so um, I said, you know, I just designed it. She designed it. I just built it with help, with help. I didn't do it alone. And of course we took all the lumber from the, the ACT skids and stuff. And it was a nice set. Even Joe Betts, I think, did the costumes. And uh, she gave me a little plaque saying the best set ever in the or something like that. And I remember that. I still have it. She made it herself, painted it. So it's very special. When I first started, the atmosphere uh, was sort of a club-like. But in the last, especially in the last two years, there have been more and younger people involved expanding our uh, resources, so to speak. Uh, what ICCT has been most meaningful and memorable to me, Music Man. I love the show and it was a lot of fun. Uh, it also took some adjusting when I got less floor space than expected, but it worked out great. To do it with ICCT. The first production that I did with ICCT, as I said, was My Fair Lady in October of 94. I didn't hear about auditions for that show until they were into callbacks. But I call, contacted the theater and the director, Michael Stokes, was kind enough to say, sure, come on out, you can audition. So I went to callbacks and was fortunate enough that he cast me in the role of Mrs. Pierce, the housekeeper. One thing that I'll never forget about that was that um, as is custom with ICCT, rehearsals are not always done at the theater before the show starts. So we were at a, a church, um, oh, I can't remember exactly where, but I walked in the building and Michael turned around and he looked at me and he said, well, hi there, Mrs. Pierce. And without losing a beat, I said, oh, just call me Mildred. Now, Michael just broke down laughing. And for years after that, he never called me Bev or Mama Mead. He called me Mildred. Now, the funny part of that story I am going to confess right now is that at the time of that discussion, I had never heard of the movie Mildred Pierce. I had never seen the movie Mildred Pierce. So I didn't get why it was so funny to him. 
until years later when I saw it on Netflix and then I understood. <laughs> so that was a great time for me. I really enjoyed that a lot. Um, another production that I was in that I thoroughly enjoyed for any number of reasons was Cat on a Hot Tin Roof. I had wanted to play Big Mama for a long time. Um, it's a great role, it's a great show, and I was honored that they chose me to portray Big Mama. The other portion of, of that show that meant so much to me is that for the first time, um, Jeff and I were both in the show and I was playing Big Mama and he was playing my son. So Real Mom and Real Son were playing Character Mom and Character Son and that meant so much to me because we were able to enjoy our favorite thing to do together. And so I think theater has been something that's brought us together for many, many years, and I hope it does for many more to come. It was my great privilege to have Mary Beth Schubert in two productions that I directed, um, both in To Kill a Mockingbird um, and then uh, in Our Town, which I directed for the beginning of, I believe, the 40th anniversary season. And um, I'm sure you all know who Mary Beth was, um, but she was an extraordinary woman and she's the real founder of the Iowa City Community Theater. And uh, if you are, are ever over at the university, she's in the Hall of Fame there of the University of University Theaters. And um, it, was, it was just absolutely great working with her. She was so always so supportive of everything that I did. And um, she was just a wonderful woman. And so I wanted to pay a little tribute to her. My first show probably was one of the most memorable and that was um, a dinner theater. And it was in 1983 and it was uh, the play same time next year. And uh, we did the play, I believe for six weekends and uh, did it in the corner of the theater. And we had a marvelous time uh, I had a wonderful actress to work with, uh, Janice Nippon Sixth, um, and it was just the two of us where we age uh, five years in between scenes, and there's uh, six scenes, and uh, it was a terrific experience, but I remember one night uh, we were in the middle of uh, one of the scenes where it was rather intimate between the two of us, I believe we were on a couch, and uh, the power went out in the theater. Um, I don't know if there was a storm or just, uh, I, I can't recall what caused the power outage, but all of a sudden everyone was plunged into darkness and uh janice and i just sat there for a moment and finally she whispered to me what what do we do now and i said well we just we just sit here and wait until till the lights come back up or something else happens and sure enough in about a minute's time the light came back on somebody must have found the switch and uh we picked up right where we were you know and didn't miss a beat and the audience was right there with us so but that's just kind of exemplary about the, what the, the types of things that happen at uh, Iowa City Community Theater. I mean, not bad things. It was a it was a fun, fond memory. But, um, you know, you never know what you're going to get. And the fact that you're somewhat resilient, you can go with the punches and uh, land on your feet. Uh, that's just one of many memories I have, probably the earliest one since it was 37 years ago. I got involved in ICCT with my friend, Mary Fowler, who she and I were in high school at Regina, about a year and a half apart. And I first, they got me going on doing the makeup for everybody. And then that was getting a little boring and I was sitting around with not much to do. So I was in chorus, plus, the craft work and I, I could sew, but I sewed at home a lot and I wanted to do something different. And then we started having needing singers on stage. 
and we had, I remember, the backup wood um, fence that was Oklahoma. And I got to sit on the fence with two of the neat guys who were still in school. Other most important show to me is actually, was also an ICCT show, uh, and it was A Man of No Importance. If Charlie Brown is where I found my friends, A Man of No Importance is where I found my family, because the whole cast was very close in that one, and I really felt that sense of community that I don't think I had felt before that. It's like I found people who I think of as aunts and uncles and even some surrogate moms and things, and I, I told them that, and they're all, they all come to see my shows and are always so excited to see me and maybe we don't hang out outside of that but it's still such a sense of community i feel that there are people who care about me just because we did this show together and it means a lot to all of us so i always think of my theater family as, as exactly that my family here um they're the people i want to share news with after you know after i tell my mom who's so far away and it just really made Iowa feel like home for me. My earliest memory of Iowa City Community Theater uh, has to be the mid-70s production of, of Mice and Men. Uh, my father, Jerry Rowe, was played Curly in that production. He uh, later went on to direct several shows at ICCT. Um, I first... Uh, went on stage at ICCT in the early 90s in Fiddler on the Roof. I had played Tevia in the, our high school production of that. So I thought, oh, that's a fun show. I want to be in it again. And so I was, I played the rabbi in that show. Uh, I also did The King and I in a chorus role. And I was involved in the 40th anniversary show. And then I went dark for about 22 years. Um, for our 62nd season, uh, we did, we opened with MAME, which was also a show that I loved from high school. And uh, that was directed by Richard Teagues. And I had the opportunity to play Beauregard and opposite Marsha Hughes as MAME. And that was a lovely experience. Uh, but I think the most memorable experience that I had uh, was A Man of No Importance, directed by Krista Newman, assisted directed by Kathy Maxey. It was a replacement show. Uh, we had a director who couldn't direct. Uh, that happened several times. I've been on the board for so long. Um, don't remember exactly which show it was that we had to cancel, uh, but we picked up this absolutely delightful little show. Krista got a phenomenal cast, and just watching the experience as, as we went through the rehearsal process was incredibly moving to me. Um, probably the best director I've ever worked with. Um, and so I kind of want to talk about a little bit about the very first show I did because I think it's helped kind of change who I am as a person in more ways than I can really imagine. So um, uh, Wes Habley, who's done a number of different um, music directors in, um, in the area um, and for ICCT, uh, kept trying to get me to audition for shows uh, and through a number of reasons, me being out of town, uh, me being um, just unavailable for a weekend, I was was never able to find a show that actually worked with my schedule. Um, and then he got me to audition or asked me to audition for Damn Yankees. I think he had in mind the fact that I'm a tenor and Hart has a really cool high part in it. Um, and I, so I think that's what he wanted. So um, what I like about it is I said I was going to audition. I s agreed to a time. I told emailed him that day, said I was no longer going to audition because I was scared to death to audition. Um, he was like, that's fine. Don't worry about it. Do what you have to do. I then ended up showing to the audition anyway and frankly felt I did terrible. Um, but I guess it did help that, you know, he was music directing the show and did kind of know that I can sing. We've been in choirs before. And um, 
getting cast for that show was both awesome and completely scary because I'm thinking to myself, can I memorize all these songs? Can I memorize all these lines? Can I memorize all of this? Uh, I've kind of always had a lot of self-doubt um, to myself in, in small ways. And a lot, I mean, I still do to some small degree, but a lot of that has gone away because I was cast at that show. That's what I think Iowa City Community Theater means to me. It means challenging myself um, and growing as a person. Um, and I think it's it's helped me and I, I think it's helped others as well kind of find who they are um, in this in their place in this world. And I think um, the acceptance that they show to everybody is just fantastic. I made most of my friends at the theater. Um, Elaine, we became close friends. I mean, and, you know, I'm just Mary Beth Schubert. Oh my goodness, how could you not love this woman? I mean, Mary Fowl, when I first started, I went, was a work night. We had work night, I think Wednesday night, I forgot. I think it was Wednesday. And Mary Fowler was in charge. And so I popped in and said, hi, I'm here to volunteer. And she was so nice and so, um, well, you felt you were at home. You felt there were people here that, you know, you can you can become friends with. For a lot of people, um, the first show that you were involved in, maybe that's, it holds a special place. Maybe like you say, like your, your first pet, your first car, your first job, your first love. Um, because man, I've had so many amazing experiences with, you know, all of you. And, uh, but the first time I think when you, I had no idea. When I, after I did Kiss Me Kate, like Josh said, we did 12 shows. We did four weeks. And I remember thinking, wow, maybe this is what it's like if you're a real actor, when you, you know, you have to be prepared and you got to stay healthy for a whole month. But when I got done, that was my first experience with the, the, the huge drop after being up and having all these people that you made friends with. And all of a sudden I feel like they're ripped away from me. You know, I'll never see them again. And I felt like if I'm not cast in a show, I'll never see my friends again. You know, and I felt I like that gonna, be here. And then- I was gonna like, ask, is, you know is there, was there anyone who ever mentioned uh, as one of the bads, the, uh, the post show letdown? Uh, no, no, nobody has mentioned that, but that's a yeah. good one. That's yeah. a good yeah. one. It's hard. Yeah. yeah. So I, I realized like, you know what? I can be friends with people outside of a show. <laughs> and then if they're in a show, I can go see them in the show. And then I get to see all my friends again. And your friend circle just get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, which is great. Theater keeps giving. <laughs>